Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Leonid and uh, today I'm going to talk about multi-cloud provisioning. I would like to share some of my experience uh, doing multi-cloud provisioning projects at the startup called Explenty. And just to kick things off, there's probably multiple uh, reasons why you want to go uh, multi-cloud. One of them is disaster recovery. Uh, the ability to provision your services on top of a different cloud in case you are uh, main cloud have some availability issues. Also, additionally, um, each cloud has its own characteristics, so it can be a, a good thing to move some of your services to the cloud that better fits your needs. But none of these reasons is why Explenty wanted to expand into multi-cloud. And just in a couple of what Explenty provides a, a Hadoop uh, SaaS service when you don't need to know the Hadoop internals in, in order to process your big data. So you actually can, in visual way, visualize your queries. And explain to have a cluster's architecture that looks something similar to this. When a new user wants a Hadoop cluster, there's a worker um, built in uh, Ruby and Puppet, which know how to process that request and provision a new class Hadoop cluster on Amazon for that user. And uh, the request was to extend that worker um, functionality to provision this cluster on top of three additional uh, Provider, software, Rackspace, and a private installation of OpenStack. So I just want to go briefly on some of the challenges we had during that process. And in case there are some people here who are interested in uh, multi-cloud provisioning, it should provide a good taste of what to expect for from such a project. The first thing we noticed is the lack of network automation. When you request a new instance from Amazon, uh, you actually got, that's an example, you actually got everything uh, configured for you from DNS to all the um, networking. This is something that's not uh, available on the other provi cloud providers we worked with on dif different degrees. You probably will need to take care uh, about the DNS yourself and to go into additional provisioning step to, for example, attach a public IP. It introduced some issues for us, for example, with our Puppet configuration, how we were using Puppet. So we solved that by using a third-party DNS service. Uh, it's not always applicable. In our case, it was a good solution. However, you can also manage your own DNS if you don't mind the writing the automation and managing your own DNS on the additional cloud. Additionally, uh, we were using uh, something uh, called user data scripts. That's when you request a new EC2 instance, you actually can provide a shell script that, that will configure that instance for you at boot time. And that's uh, supported, not supported on all the providers we were, we were uh, using. So we also couldn't eliminate the need of that. So we needed to, and again, add some additional provisioning steps to to overcome that, to emulate that behavior. Additionally, it was very hard for us to find the same uh, similar instance sizes across the providers. So for example, as you can see here, the, with the same CPU and memory, we actually got less storage. So we could over-provision or add additional provisioning steps to attach additional storage. But all of that is easily discoverable during the development process itself, but we actually saw some behaviors which we couldn't see before we run the application in production. One thing that is very interesting to discover is that each cloud has its, has its own weak spots. We were optimizing our provisioning process for Amazon, and it began to fail on different phases on different providers. So actually, we need to invest time for that. Additionally, the performance between the providers varies differently. differently. So as you can see in that graph from Ravelo blog, uh, Thank you, guys. But we actually discovered the same. <laughs> Pay attention to the, to the difference in average time and the APR error rates. So we needed to somehow overcome that. We added the on-off switches for easily to switch on-off regions of some of the providers. We saw they are not reliable. In addition to that, um, we fine-tuned our retry mechanisms to better uh, work with the different providers. So just to summarize, I provided some of the challenges we had. We actually had much more, especially in the networking uh, department. However, if I need to take one thing from that experience, is that despite the fact that all the providers seem to have the same basic functionality on paper, when you try to move from Amazon to another providers, you need to plan to invest to fill the gap of the automation. 
and it's not an easy task. You, you just need to plan for that. It's not a configuration change. The devil is in the details. So thank you very much. That's my Twitter. Thank you.